Hey everybody, John Wagner here with Dev Central, and we are going through the 2021 OWASP Top 10 Security Risks. And coming in at number six is vulnerable and outdated components. Vulner vulnerable and outdated components. So this moves up from number nine on the 2017 list uh, up to number six on this list, right? And I wanted to just say a, a quick second that this was voted number two in that community survey that OWASP did. If you go all the way back and watch the first video in this series, uh, we talk about how did the OWASP organization come up with this top 10, uh, and they looked at a lot of data uh, you know, from different applications, different companies that supplied a lot of data, but they also just did, they did these community surveys, and they got surveys, re survey results back, and they decided that at least two of the top 10 in the 2021 list would come from the community survey and not just data driven, right? And this one, vulnerable and outdated components was number two in that community survey list. But as it turns out, it also had plenty of data to support it to make the top 10 list anyway, all right? So this thing's on the list regardless of how you look at it, all right? So vulnerable components and outdated components, uh, you know, this is something that we struggle with a lot. Um, and it's, you know, when you look at an application, and I'll just kind of start to draw this out a little bit, you know, when you start to build an application, then this is composed and comprised of many different components. I'll just put like some building blocks right here, you know, whatever, whatever. So there's different, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll put components here. Uh, there's different libraries that you may, may uh, incorporate, you know, those types of things, right? And so, your application uh, relies, as it were, on third-party libraries or a variety of, of external components that you use to bring together to build your application, right? So then, you know, when, when users are accessing this, that's awesome, they're experiencing this amazing thing, but when attackers are coming in, I'll just, you know, I'll put attackers here, when they're looking at your application, they're looking at this as a whole, but really they're going to start to look at, you know, hey, what kind of components is this made up of? What kind of libraries are these, is this application using? That kind of thing, right? All right, so to know if your application is vulnerable, you need to know all the different versions of all the components that you use, both client side and server side, right? Um, and so, of course, if the software is vulnerable uh, or unsupported or out of date, then you're probably vulnerable to this, uh, to this risk, right? Um, if you don't scan for vulnerabilities regularly or like subscribe to security bulletins, those kinds of things, then you're probably vulnerable. Um, if you don't fix or upgrade the underlying platforms or frameworks, um, you know, dependencies, that type of thing, then you're probably vulnerable. So this, this is, this happens, you know, let's say you have, you know, some sort of a framework that you, that you use, of, uh, you know, to, to build out your application. And let's say that your, uh, your change control or your patching is done on a monthly or quarterly basis, right? And you, it's just because, you know, you got, you got to line up all of the perfect teams and all the schedules and all the timing and all that stuff. It has to line up and it's like, hey, here's our change window. Here's our maintenance window. Here's our patch window, right? And it has to happen on this day at this time or else the whole business just goes, you know, goes under or whatever, right? And so... You know, if that's if that's the situation, which I certainly understand that, um, but that leaves you vulnerable to these, you know, with like vulnerable frameworks or patches that are not applied yet, that type of thing. You know, you're going to be vulnerable until that patch, that magical patch day happens, right? And so, uh, so that's a fairly common scenario. Um, if uh, if software developers that develop your application, if they don't test the compatibility of the updated or upgraded or patched libraries then you may be vulnerable to this as well. So it's, uh, you know, those are several things to kind of keep in mind in terms of, you know, wondering, hey, is my application vulnerable? So here's a little scenario. Um, so whenever you build an application, the components that are used within that application typically run with the same privileges as the application itself. So any kind of flaws in the components are going to or could result in serious impacts, right? Um, and so, I mean, these, these flaws could be accidental, it could be, you know, like a coding error, or it could be like an intentional uh, flaw, like a, you know, someone put a back door into one of these components, that kind of thing, right? Um, so, like, for example, uh, one component that you may use, or that one framework, and I'll just kind of put, I'll put it right over here, uh, Apache, Apache Struts uh, 2, Struts 2, the Apache Struts 2 framework, 
um, had, this was back in 2017, that had this remote code execution vulnerability um, that enabled the execution of arbitrary code on the server. I mean, it's this, uh, it's this really big thing and it led to significant breaches on a variety of applications all over the world, right? So that was back in 2017. This is the 2021 OWASP list, right? So you're talking about several years here. Um, and so ultimately you should patch that, you should update that. And that goes back to what we just said just a second ago. Sometimes it's hard to get into that, you know, that rhythm of saying, hey, I'm gonna update things. Um, and so the, uh, another thing that I would mention as well is there was a, uh, there was a breach that happened uh, back several months ago um, and that was a, a FireEye breach. And I'll, I'll just put FireEye right here as a kind of a, a, a point of reference. Um, so what FireEye, so they're a security company. They go out and do like red team assessment kind of stuff. And they'll come out and say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attack your network. And so they have a variety of tools that they use to attack and look at your applications and say, hey, are you vulnerable to these, you know, a variety of things, right? So they look at different CVEs, these common vulnerabilities and exposures. Um, and then they kind of build this toolkit to then come out and test your applications against their tools. Uh, and they, you know, they're going to say, hey, let's let us do it because we're the good guys. And so that way, when the attackers come in, then you're all safe. All right. Anyway, there was a breach that FireEye had as a result of some other stuff. And that was this whole big thing. Um, but, but nonetheless, the tools that they use, like the actual attack, you know, exploit tools and all that were confiscated. They were like, you know, exploited or they were, they were you know, publicized, that whole thing, right? And so, uh, so it was interesting to me that in the FireEye list, you know, of, of tools or the exploits that they would come after, um, that over 99% of the assessment tool, uh, you know, vulnerabilities that they would look at, over 99% were caused um, or looked or were looking at five different CVEs. Like there were these top five CVEs that they were coming after to do all these, uh, to, you know, to look at their exploit or to use their exploit tools again against. And by the way, there were over seven and a half million instances of these vulnerabilities uh, that, were, that were shown that, you know, FireEye was able to, to come and exploit and all that stuff. Anyway, the point is there were five CVEs and, I'm, and I won't go into the detail of exactly which ones, but just to give you an idea, one of them was in was a 2016 CVE. One of them was a 2017 CVE. Two of them were 2019 CVEs, and one of them was a 2020 CVE. So the point of that is those, if, if FireEye as a security company is looking at years old CVEs and they're successfully exploiting, you know, seven and a half million different times, right? Uh, these very old CVEs, then that means that these applications are using components with outdated, you know, are, are using outdated components, right? Vulnerable components. So you need to stay up to date on this. All right, so that, that was the kind of the whole point of that little discussion. All right, so in order to kind of, you know, secure yourself or guard against this, you need to remove any kind of unused dependencies, unnecessary features, unnecessary components, uh, that, that whole thing. OWASP, by the way, has a project called Dependency Check, and it's very useful to run against your application to tell, you know, if there's any unused or unnecessary dependencies, right? So you can check that out. Um, you need to continuously inventory the versions of both your client side and server side components to, to see what you're running, right? And you only need to use components from official sources over secure links. So don't go to, you know, crazycomponent.com and get some un, you know, unverified uh, component, right? Um, you also need to monitor for libraries and components that are unmaintained or don't create security patches for older versions. There's another, uh, there's another thing called Dependabot uh, that will crawl your code and notify you when libraries are out of date. So that's a really useful tool, Dependabot. Um, another kind of pointer that I would just say is I would recommend that you stay what I'm going to call, and in fact, uh, there's a, a security, you know, a security giant uh, named Jim Manico, and he uh, he would he says the same thing. Um, he says, stay one step below the bleeding edge. And so basically, what that means, and you know, in terms of your updates and your your uh, um, upgrades and those kinds of things, and what that means is, you know, if a company comes up with update, you know, version 1.2.3 or whatever, and that's like the bleeding edge, maybe stay on 1.2.2 before you go to 1.2.3. Um, 
And primarily because it's like, hey, let's let that thing kind of bake and get out there. Also, we've seen a lot of uh, supply chain uh, problems, right? So supply chain attacks. In fact, that goes back to some of this fire eye stuff. But supply chain problems. So effectively what you're doing is you're kind of letting the bleeding edge uh, version get out there first. Let it get through the supply chain. <laughs> let it kind of figure out are there any kind of issues with that. Once that's kind of settled down, the dust is settled, then you can go to a more stable version. And then you kind of stay one step behind you know, that very bleeding edge, that very cutting edge version. Um, having said that, definitely stay up to date enough that you that you are as current as you need to be, right, on your updates and your, your components and all that. All right. Um, the last thing I would mention is ensure that you have an ongoing plan for monitoring and triaging and applying updates or configuration changes, frankly, over the whole lifetime of this application or this portfolio that you're managing. So that's a really important thing to do as well. Uh, to guard against this security risk. So, hey, stay safe out there, and thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.